So now in this final video of this lecture, what we're going to be finishing up on is understanding and completing our look at the mammal innate immunity, and this will be the third one. Mammal innate immunity, and this will be Roman numeral three. So just to reiterate, when we're looking at innate immunity, we're looking at things that prevent entry, or if entry does happen, quickly destroying that organism, that pathogen, whatever it may be. So we prevented entry through barrier defenses, and if those barrier defenses were evaded successfully by a pathogen, we have these cellular defenses that are going to quickly destroy the pathogen, mainly through phagocytosis or through a natural killer cell going to that infected cell and killing that infected cell with some chemicals. Now, to conclude our look at innate immunity, there are still some other things with innate immunity that allow for death of pathogen upon entry besides the cellular defenses. One of them is the fact that uh, we have also, just like insects, antimicrobial peptides, these proteins that are very good at destroying foreign invaders. Um, antimicrobial peptides, and also, generally speaking, some more advanced proteins, larger proteins, I should say. Those can be found in the form of interferons. These are often abbreviated as IFN. Interferons are going to be these secreted proteins that are going to float throughout the body, circulate throughout the body, that actually kill, they kill virus-infected cells. So think about it like this. You're actually going to kill cells that are within your own body. But the reason why you're doing this is because they are so far into this viral infection that they're too far to save. You can't possibly save these cells. The best idea to do is to put them out of their misery and kill them. This is not only good for the cell itself, for your own body, but it's also good for other cells around it because if you kill virus infected cells, you are killing the virus that's within the cell and that therefore prevents any further spread to nearby cells because that's what a virus wants to do. It wants to infect, it wants to take use of that host machinery, it wants to replicate it and then it wants to lice and just infect even more. How can you stop that? Use these interferons that directly just stop the entire process, kill the entire virus infected cell, including the virus particles, therefore preventing the spread. So that's a form of a protein that's an innate defense, not specific, it's just any old virus infected cell. So it's a set, the characteristic here is a virus infected cell, they'll be killed with these interferons. Another system that's utilized in innate immunity that's really, really cool, I think, is known as the complement system. The complement system is one of the most complex processes in all of immunity. But what we're just going to understand about it is that it's a collection of antimicrobial peptides. These antimicrobial peptides will be in the form of about 30 different, 30 of them, 30 different plasma proteins that are going to work together to complete an innate immunity action and defense. So let's say you have a pathogen in the body, specifically a bacteria. It's usually a bacteria in this situation. There are going to be about 30 different proteins, part of this complement system, that are going to be circulating in the blood. Normally, when they circulate in the blood as a part of the plasma of the blood, they're actually in an inactive form because there's no need for them to do their job right now of killing a cell. But let's say you have a foreign invasion. Let's say something has evaded a barrier defense. These complement system proteins are going to be activated. They will be activated, they'll be very much on when they contact a pathogen surface. So when they, they have this capability of recognizing pathogen surfaces, like let's say an LPS that's on the surface of a pathogen, like a gram-negative bacteria, they'll recognize it. And once they recognize it, one protein recognizes it, the rest of the proteins will work together to combine and complement each other, that's what's called the complement system, to eventually do the following. This all eventually leads to the lysis of pathogens. Remember, a big theme in immunology is to kill an organism, a foreign invader. The best way to kill anything is to lyse it, to open up its cell membrane so that it just explodes basically on itself. It releases all of its material and it just dies, therefore. That's the lysis that we want to make sure we do, and the complement system does a good job of that. This is a very simplified version of the complement system. Um, it's a very, very complex process, but overall, these are the ways that we use antimicrobial peptides or proteins to innately kill things. Again, these are non-specific. 
So let's look at the final thing of innate immunity. I think it's a very, very important process to understand. It's called the inflammatory response. So we've talked briefly about inflammation before when we were looking at the cardiovascular system and the diseases associated with it. But specifically now we want to focus on the uh, innate immunity side of this, how it results in successful uh, destruction of a pathogen. So an inflammatory response is a very complex process, much like everything in immunology, that's summarized nicely in figure 43.8. Whenever we talk about inflammation, what you want to understand is the following. This is a general overview of this process. Inflammation is just going to be something that always is activated. It always occurs successfully if you have any sort of tissue damage. So it's activated via tissue damage. So let's say you get a cut, that's tissue damage. There's going to be inflammation around that cut. Inflammation around that cut, whatever it may be, results in increased heat around that cut. It results in increased redness around that cut. It results usually in swelling as well. And we know that swelling, a good way to say swelling is also edema. So this is going to be possible edema and also pain, which is very common. I think most of us understand that when you get a cut of some sort, you will feel pain. But you also notice all these other things, heat on that area, redness, swelling, pain, whatever. Those are all going to be characteristic of some sort of tissue damage. And this is a purposeful response our body does. You might be wondering, well, why would our body induce these, you know, sort of negative side effects on us after a cut? Well, this is all because this is an innate response that actually occurs systematically and successfully through innate immune function. Let's take a look at what happens during this process to result in the cut uh, response that we see usually. Why do we do this? Well, inflammation is going to be triggered initially by the fact that we have these cells known as mast cells. They're found usually within our tissues or near our tissues, and mast cells are going to release a structure, a protein called histamine. So they release histamine. Mast cell will release histamine. Histamine functions in the following. Once histamine has been released by these mast cells, they contain lots of histamine within them, histamine will dilate. So histamine, its job is to dilate nearby blood vessels, open them up, increase the blood flow, dilate nearby blood vessels. Okay, so now we have dilated the blood vessels. What does that immediately result in? That immediately results in increasing blood flow, and that's what it does. It increases blood flow. Notice now, if you have increased blood flow, that means you're going to get more blood, meaning more heat. You're going to get more redness in an area. You possibly will get more swelling as well. So we see that because of the histamine. The histamine has caused this to happen purposefully. Now, why are we increasing blood flow? There must be a reason for this as a part of the inflammatory response. When you make the blood vessels more uh, dilated, you also, when you increase the blood flow with histamine, this simultaneously makes the blood vessels more permeable. Makes vessels more permeable. Usually we don't want vessels to be permeable, meaning letting things in and out very, very freely. We only want oxygen or red blood cells to leave the vessels via that capillary exchange mechanism. But in this situation, we actually purposefully make the vessel more permeable. This is usually the reason we get edema. Because again, remember that osmotic pressure versus blood pressure scenario that we have with blood vessels? Sometimes plasma leaks through these blood vessels based off of the blood pressure, osmotic pressure scenario. In this situation, if you make the blood vessel more permeable, that means you may leak more plasma than usual. And if you leak more plasma than usual, you get more ISF than usual. More ISF in an area means more swelling, more fluid in an area, therefore edema. So again, this is purposefully done. Why are we constantly doing these seemingly bad things as part of inflammation? Well, this is all going to cause the following. This is when we get innate defense into this scenario. Macrophages and also neutrophils, these are phagocytic cells, very good at destroying pathogens. Macrophages and neutrophils are going to be attracted to this area. All of these reactions are going to, all these attracting mechanisms are going to say, hey, we need macroph macrophages and neutrophils um, in this area. And that's what happens because of the increased blood flow, because of the permeability. The permeability allows these large structures, these large cells like neutrophils and, ma uh, neutrophils and macrophages to get out of the blood vessel and into the tissue. Because remember, the tissue has been cut. 
and the cut is a possible site of bacteria to enter because there's no longer intact skin. So now we have these things that are very good at destroying pathogens at the area. That's really good. That's a good sign that we're doing a good inflammatory response. What these guys do, macrophages and neutrophils, they secrete these molecules known as cytokines. Cytokines are basically the chemical red flags that neutrophils and macrophages utilize. They're basically warning messages that tell the rest of the body or tell the immune system as a whole to increase blood flow or tell the body to increase blood flow to this area, even more so. So it's, again, more blood flow to this area because, again, we want even more phagocytic cells to come here because the more blood flow you have, that's when you're going to get more and more phagocytic cells because more and more phagocytic cells will be going and floating by this area that's damaged. And that's really good because you want more phag phagocytic cells here that can possibly kill an infected pathogen or an in, uh, some sort of pathogen that may enter this no longer intact skin. When you get more phagocytic cells, you get more blood flow. That means you get more nutrients. You also get more oxygen at this area because you're going to have lots of stuff occurring here. Because you get all of this stuff here, you're successfully trying to destroy a pathogen. You need a lot of energy, lots of stuff going on in this area where you have a cut so that you successfully can kill the pathogen. Now, sometimes when this all occurs and you have this battle occurring at this area, you uh, may form what is known as pus in this area as a result of the inflammatory response. And pus is just going to be a collection of fluid that's basically the after effects of all this action that's been occurring in this inflammatory response. It's going to be a bunch of fluid with a lot of white blood cells that have, you know, done their job and killed pathogens. A lot of dead pathogens will be mixed in this fluid as well, and it will also contain a lot of cellular debris. It's basically a war zone that has just sort of ended, the war has just ended, and you have all this stuff there that's going to be usually forming as pus. So that's our overall inflammatory response. The thing about this inflammatory response that I want you to recognize is that this is all usually going to be considered a local inflammatory response. This is a local response. Why is it local? Well, we had a cut to the skin, and the skin is a local region that will cause all of this to occur to have inflammation to successfully destroy anything that possibly enters because the skin is no longer intact. But sometimes what we may get is a whole body response. Sometimes, sometimes there may be inflammation throughout the body, okay? Sometimes uh, we'll say that this, sometimes this may involve the whole body, the inflammation, let's say, involves the whole body. When something involves the whole body, this is when you actually experience something known as fever. Fever is entire systemic inflammation. This is when you experience an increase in your own body temperature, this is when you also experience an increase in the entire body's phagocytic activity. Now, why are you doing this? Why are you experiencing this fever and increased body temperature? Well, this is because a fever, systemically, is going to actually be a very, very bad environment overall, not just for you, let's say, but you can suffer through it. The thing that can't suffer through a fever is the microorganism that's in you. This actually directly disrupts microorganism growth. This is kind of the reason, this is actually the reason why when you're sick, you experience fever a lot of the times because a fever, though it's bad for you and at some stage or at some level, it's horrible for a microorganism that's infecting you because you're increasing the body temperature, you're making all of these phagocytic cells active. That's basically a war zone that's going on in your body that's effectively getting rid of this microorganism, doing everything it can to make sure that the microorganism cannot live and survive within you. That covers our look at innate immunity. As you can see, I love talking about this stuff. It's my absolute favorite thing. I'm sorry for the length of these videos. I just really love the immune system. Hopefully, you've gained a greater appreciation for it. And overall, let's understand that innate immunity is a general defense mechanism. Now, in the next lecture, what we're going to be focusing on is the specific defense mechanisms associated with adaptive immunity.